Hello, this is Python and Excel part 20. We're taking a quick detour away from the data cleaning project in part 19 to quickly talk about method chaining, the pipe function, and the assign function. I've got this US Census population estimate data set. For this exercise, I want to just get the rows for the 50 US states. So that means rows where the state column isn't equal to zero and where it isn't equal to 72. In addition, I only want to get these highlighted columns. The rest of them can be derived from these, so we can forget about those for now. First, I want to note that I've put the entire table into this data frame called dfraw. Let's create a Python cell and start with making a copy of dfraw. This will help keep things separate. We'll use dfloc to locate data using labels, and we'll say where the state column is in 0 or 72, but we want where it is not in. So put a tilde before the expression to negate it. That's the row filter. For the column filter, we want to skip the first column and just get the eight columns following it. Let's take a quick look. Great, we have the right columns. Next, we want to unpivot these four population columns. For that, we use the melt method and set the ID vars variable to be the list of columns that we aren't unpivoting. So that's just the first four columns. Let's check that worked. Wonderful. Next, we should create a year column. The year is just the last four characters of the variable column, but we want those to be numbers, so as type int. There it is. Next, let's just note that this first group of rows estimates base 2020 isn't actual data for 2020, it's just the base from which the percentage changes were calculated. To make sure we're not misleading anyone, let's set the value for year to those rows to something else. Let's say df year where this will let us do a conditional update to the year column. Where the first three characters of the variable column are equal to pop, use whatever's in the year column, otherwise put the text base 2020. Okay, great, that seems to have worked. Let's get rid of this variable column now. We use df drop for that with the in place equals true. Then finally, let's make the columns lowercase. And there we have it. Now let's use this lambda function to show us the code while we work on an alternative. There's the code. Let's perform the same operation using method chaining. So remember that method chaining starts with a parenthesis. This tells Python that everything within is part of the same operation and lets us have line breaks to keep things tidy. We'll start with df raw and exactly the same loc expression. For the next part, we want to melt, or unpivot the data. It might feel like we should just put dot melt like this, but as you'll see, this doesn't work. This error message is saying there's a column we're passing to ID vars that doesn't exist in the data frame on which we're using the melt operation. That data frame is the result of the loc expression above, and that loc expression has already removed that sum lev column. So we can't use df raw.columns for the ID vars. Well, what can we use? This is a chain, so the loc expression hasn't been assigned to anything, and as a result, it doesn't have a variable name. For situations like this, we can use the pipe method. And in the pipe method, we can either pass a previously defined function or a lambda function, which is what I'm doing here. This lambda is a simple function that accepts a single argument, which I've called df. You can call it whatever you want. And what happens here is that the pipe method passes the result of the previous expression, that's the loc expression, into the lambda. And then we can refer to it by the name of the argument, which is df. So that way we can go ahead and apply the melt operation and pass the right column names into the ID vars parameter. As you can see, it's melted the data frame in the same way as before. Next, we need to create a new column called year. To do that in the method chain, we need to use this assign method. And the assign method lets us again use a function to refer to the result of the previous step by a name. The difference is we put the new column name and an equals before the function definition. This then gives us a new column called year. Next, we want to make that base 2020 change, but instead of using a separate assign call, we can just put the where method at the end here and define it in the same way as before. If the first three characters of the variable column are pop, then leave the year alone, otherwise put the text base 2020. Now we have just a few more steps. Drop the variable column and make the column names lowercase. For that, we use the rename method and simply assign to the columns the function we want to apply to the column names. And that's it. So the important things to remember are, one, we can use the pipe method to give a name to the result of the previous step and use that name in an expression. And two, 
we can create a new column without breaking the chain by using the assign method. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support. Have a great day.